Hello, welcome back to the Arturia SynthEV tutorial series. Today we're looking at two sections, reverberation and range. Let's deal with reverberation first. This is really, really straightforward. What I'm going to do is set up a, a nice simple patch, take my oscillator into the envelope, out of the envelope into a filter, out of the filter to our output. Okay. Now, instead of coming directly from the filter to the output, I'm actually going to patch it into the reverb. This is a little bit unusual. Usually, um, you, you apply effects to like an entire patch or an entire bank. In this case, it needs to be in series. So we're going to send the filter signal into the reverb unit here. Out of the reverb unit, we have a new output now. We're generating uh, our output signal is coming directly from the reverb unit. So we're mixed at 50%. So we're going to get a bit of dry signal, a bit of reverb. And don't forget at this point, the reverb unit is the audio output. So this isn't the reverb level. This is the audio signal level. If I turn this all the way down, we get no output. And that's wet. It's based on a spring reverb. There was a spring box in the original synthy. So that's all we need to say about reverb. Really, really simple. The next thing that we're going to do is have a look at the joystick and then plug those two things together. Now, the joystick is a dual axis so we've got independent control of x and y massive motorbike kicks off in the background awesome so the um the x value i'm going to map to my filter frequency which is done here and what you'll notice immediately is that the joystick is basically upside down so if i double click it to set it back to the center point pretty awful visual interface it's kind of difficult to see where it is but if I start playing a key on the keyboard and, and move uh, the joystick to the left the, the sound gets brighter in other words I've just virtually turned the frequency knob to the right I've turned it up and if I take the x-axis all the way to the right I've just pulled the knob backwards. So it op operates completely counterintuitively to me. I don't know if this is the way you prefer to work, but um, anyway, there it is. Now on the Y axis, we have a, an, an available modulation slot here. I'm gonna connect this to reverb mix. So what this is basically gonna do is, now on the Y axis, I'm going to vary the amount of reverb. And again, as I move the joystick up, you might intuitively expect that to increase the amount of reverb it won't it'll make it drier so right up at the top of the joystick we've got a dry signal and down at the bottom we've got a wet reverb signal and now i can do travel around the joystick back to the center again. I always think that that's the center, but if you double click it, it's slightly not. Kind of one of those weird isometric views. So really not a fan of the user interface for this thing, but and the fact that it's backwards. But there it is. It's a really useful modulation tool if you just kind of invert your head. And of course we can map it to anything we want. I can map it to the oscillator frequency. And for each axis, we have independent range controls. So here I am modulating the X axis. If I crank this all the way up, the range, the control voltage range that this thing operates over is insane. So it very quickly becomes completely inaudible. Cool. And that's it for this video, nice and simple. I wanted to deal with the joystick control today because I'll be using it when I come on to talk about the envelope shaper in the next video. Hope to see you then. Thanks very much for watching.